Jack O'Brien. Yeah. So, my situation, in a few years ago in drama, we were looking through short films and we came across one called Free To Be Me. This told the story of a man called Tommy Franklin who became world famous from dancing on the rainy streets of Byron Bay. People know me because I bought a knife about a year ago. I didn't want to wait all week for the dance floor and it started with a getting down and I chucked on a suit inspired by Charlie Chaplin dancing in the rain and it's been dance in the rain, it was so much fun. Everyone was filming on their iPhones and I woke up and I was on about dancing and all over YouTube. This video led me to ask the question, how does one man dancing on the street make world news? This led to, how do we arrive at social norms? leading to our social norms a reliable source of knowledge? And finally, to my knowledge question, how do we know that social norms are a sound basis for the conduct of our lives? Social normality varies with time, person, place, and situation. This means that the concept of normality is forever changing. For example, running naked in the Olympics was considered acceptable in ancient Greece. Yet if you did it now, you'd be met with a jail sentence. Giving this in a classroom context, if a teacher says that you're allowed to leave the classroom whenever you like and that there is no need to ask for permission, then the social norms within that classroom is to leave without asking. Yet if this behaviour was taken into a different classroom, then that teacher would say that the student was acting out in class. Because of this ambiguity, many areas of knowledge must be looked at in order to properly define a social norm. Social normality is often thought of in its ethical form. That is, that social norms are actions which are considered morally acceptable by society. While people share ethical principles, and this enables us to successfully interact with each other, every person has their own slightly differing set of ethical principles. As a society, ethical principles have a huge variation, even when given simple yes or no questions. So for example, 65% of the population support the death penalty, and 60% support gay marriage. These statistics lead us to questioning are social norms different to popular preference? While I'll address this later, it would, appear that mo it would appear that popular support is a major factor in the creation of social norms, as without it, people would not reap the systematic advantages or the sense of inclusion that people feel. Yet we must ask, to what extent is popular support required? Is it 50% support, 75% or 100%? With such varying opinion in such a simple question, more complex questions, such as what are social norms, would provide a huge amount of variation in opinion. While popular support is not the only factor in the making of a social norm, it is certainly a key factor and needs to be accounted for. Therefore, ethics cannot be the only source of um, base of a social norm. Religion often provides a basis for some of our most crucial social norms. All religions give instructions showing how life should be conducted, such as the Ten Commandments of Christianity and the virtues of Buddhism. The life guides that most major religions present are reflective of society's social norms. Such social norms include not stealing and kindness, as these are things people simply expect from each other without having to ask. And this gives rise to the idea of laws of God or nature. These are thought to be moral laws to which all people are born with. However, some of these laws, which are meant to be universal throughout time and space, have changed. For example, the Bible allows slavery, yet this is no longer acceptable in Christian societies. While this is only an example in Christianity, the same occurs across all religions, given long enough, leaving us with either that religion has yet to find the um, true set of natural laws, and this questions how people can expect them from each other if there's so much ambiguity, or that social norms are forever changing in the modern opinion. This idea of social norms sides more with the perspective of the human sciences. The human sciences also take into account the change of social norms across societies, times and situations, as well as stressing the importance of the different societies in which people have lived. Human sciences, being based in rational knowledge, is largely dependent on the scientific method of data observation and conclusion. One such, uh, one such social experiment conducted was when scientists pretended to spray mint-smelling mint airspray around a room. The occupants, were to put, the occupants of this room were to put up their hand when they smelt mint. 
In actual fact, it was just odorless water. However, within five minutes, everyone had risen their hands. Experiments like this caused the human sciences to support the concept that we model our social behavior through different types of peer pressure, ranging from the individual level to small groups such as classes, larger groups such as schools, districts, cities, states, countries, continents, maybe it's low, and the world. Um, human sciences examine different groups of people, and this can account for the sometimes contrasting conclusions it provides. Overall, however, looking at these three aspects of social norms, it appears that the human sciences is the most likely, as it accounts for society's constant changing nature and how matters such as what, are, what is normal are decided upon. So from my definition, a social norm is a societal behaviour which is in popular support, often derived from the actions of role models like leaders and friends, used as a mechanism to fit into society that we belong to, and is something that becomes such a part of our nature that it is rarely questioned. Using these points, we must now assess the soundness of a social norm. Pragmatism looks at the effectiveness and success of social norms to achieve their aims. Using the definition of the human sciences, the primary purpose of a social norm is to allow people to fit into society. This idea is that they bring unity to society and allow easy cohabitation. To this extent, social norms achieve a largely sound basis as they create unity where there could be chaos and allow people to predict the actions of each other. Like road rules, social norms are the rules of society and allow us to function together. No one here, for example, is sitting behind me, yet I doubt anyone told you to do so. Instead, it was just assumed. While this is only an example, it illustrates the importance of social norms in your everyday life and its practical importance. Rational thinking has always had a tendency for the implementation of laws and rules, such as the laws of physics. As social norms are somewhat the rules of society, it would then seem logical that social norms have a rational basis. Yet, unlike the laws of physics, social norms are always changing, varying with time, situation and more. The human sciences definition says that the creation of a social norm appears to come from peer pressure rather than its need to be proven. This means that there is no evidence needed to demonstrate a social norm's particular use to a society before it is implemented. Consequently, it is likely that social norms are not entirely rational, but are more emotionally based. Emotionally, social norms appeal to people greatly. They are likely to be one of humanity's most traditional concepts, and this tradition resonates strongly with people's emotions, as subconscious pride is experienced in doing what generations of family members have done. As well as this, there is a sense of unity experienced. People have always found comfort in being part of a larger unit, whether this be a political party or a music concert. Social norms are across a large portion of society, and as such, those involved are part of a larger unit. This allows people to feel a sense of inclusion within society itself. And as a result of this, for many people, social norms have a great emotional appeal, involving the positive feelings of tradition and inclusion. Some people, however, find this inclusion restricting, and they feel they lose themselves within the crowd. So how reliably can we answer my knowledge question? While there are many limitations through the different ways of knowing I have used, such as the, dedu the deductive reasoning of the human sciences, or the often irrational emotional knowledge, I think that my knowledge question can be reasonably reliably answered, and is as inclusive of most areas of knowledge and several ways of knowing. This reliability means that we can now apply the answer to my knowledge question to my real-life situation and other situations. In the newfound understanding that, the social, that social norms are a reasonably reliable source of knowledge, we can conclude that Tommy's actions are ones which do not show knowledgeable thinking. His ignorance of the different ways of knowing, with sole focus on emotional knowledge, has meant that his actions lack overall knowledge and thus cause his abandonment of the social norms. After this investigation, it appears that this was not the most knowledgeable choice to make, and he would have done better to follow social norms. This can be applied to other situations, like if you're writing an English essay, don't start with a conclusion. However, this is a large amount of uncertainty in these broader statements, and with the changing time and situation, an in-depth analysis is required before further knowledge claims can be made. Thank you.